Hello, and thank you for watching Access Asia on France 24. Coming up, China's social credit experiment uses surveillance and public shaming to manipulate people's behavior. Though it tries to sort the good apples from the bad, is the system itself rotten? Unlike much of the rest of the world, Japan's trains are neither late nor early. Marvels of engineering, to be sure, but the real explanation goes beyond the tracks. An age ain't nothing but a number. This dance troupe in Taiwan may have bad knees and osteoporosis. Its oldest member is 91. She says hip hop makes her feel young. Well, the world's most populated country has begun a controversial experiment to know its people better. China has tried to crack down on fraud and corruption. It's also trying to lower risks of doling out loans. So now the government is tracking citizens' behavior from smoking on a train to jaywalking. If one score drops low enough, they could be denied travel or buying an apartment. Our team on the ground reports. Imagine a society where everything you do, everything you say, and everything you buy is controlled and evaluated by the authorities. It's not science fiction. In China, it's a reality. From now on, citizens' lives are rated and assessed. This is what the Chinese Communist Party calls social credit. Here's our chart of excellence models. I'm the second one. In Fulushan, the villages have been rated for a year. There are good citizens who contribute to the community and bad ones, those who, for example, leave their trash out. Chong Kejong is featured on the Wall of Honor because of his exemplary behavior. It's because I help to keep the village clean. I also help people improve our environment and I help people become wealthier. I'm proud, but it's also a lot of pressure because when you're on this wall, you always want to be better. <laughs> The social credit rating system began testing five years ago in approximately 30 Chinese cities. It will be rolled out across the entire country by 2020. Good citizens will benefit from discounts on their bills and will be able to get bank loans more easily. Bad citizens will be banned from buying train or plane tickets. For the Communist Party, this system is a way to punish and exclude those they judge to be disturbing the harmony of Chinese society. By using the mechanism of social credit, we'll be able to establish a blacklist of people and create a system of punishment that will be based on a scientific theory. These punishments will serve as a whip to rebuild moral values. Our society needs it. Located halfway between Beijing and Shanghai, Rongchang was one of the first cities to implement social credit in 2013. In the streets, portraits of its best citizens are displayed on posters, like this soldier who saved two people from drowning. This system of social credit influences us and it also encourages us to not engage in bad behavior. For example, when we drive, we let pedestrians cross, and when we queue to get on the bus, we don't jump the queue. It seems those who have good marks get discounts on their bills. In this building, the officials of Rongcheng assign a rating to its inhabitants. We were able to sneak inside and film discreetly for a few minutes. Here, the agents collect data provided by the police, courts and tax office. Each resident is then given a rating from the letter D for not-so-good citizens to triple A for the best. This also applies to companies. This woman has just obtained the maximum score for her architecture firm. These are my company records. When I need to respond to calls for tenders, it proves that my company is well-rated. The higher the A rating is, the more reliable the company. It's a score obtained by all means. The company must not have conducted illegal actions and pay taxes accordingly. Reward good citizens and punish bad people. Human rights activist Hu Jia is already blacklisted. Deprived of his passport for 10 years, his movements are limited. 
He says the social credit system will allow authorities to more easily punish those who do not pledge allegiance to the party. In China, the people who will lose the most credit are those who do not agree with the Communist Party. We can't criticize society or the current system, nor should we say bad things about the highest levels of power and the leader. In fact, this social harmony desired by the party is set to maintain the stability of society, but it only serves to guarantee the monopoly of its power. For China's population, already scrutinized by the country's 170 million surveillance cameras, the social credit system only signals a further decline in freedom. Japan's trains run like clockwork. On average, Japanese high-speed trains are behind schedule only 30 seconds. And if they leave early, they even apologize. This punctuality, though, goes beyond engineering. It's also cultural. Aaron Ogunki explains. When a Japanese high-speed train leaves or enters the station, it's always on time. 3,300,000 passengers use Japan's rail network every day, with average annual delays of just 30 seconds. Punctual trains are a national asset in Japan. One or two minute delays are okay, but more that's impossible. Japanese people are always on time, or early. Hiroyuki, an accountant based in Tokyo, arrives early to the station. The train is here, on time. It's normal. I'll take it on time and arrive on time. Yuki takes the high-speed train to his hometown in Osaka every month. For him, late trains are unimaginable. <laughs> if the train were 30 minutes late, everyone would panic. But that is unthinkable. Punctuality is not taken lightly in Japan, where both late and early trains are unexcusable. Last November, a metropolitan rail company was forced to apologize for a train that departed 20 seconds early. Japanese commuters have rigid human resources requirements to thank for the efficiency of the country's trains. Yuri is a 28-year-old train conductor whose days are strictly regimented. She starts every morning by checking in with her superior. Okay, so don't forget, security and punctuality above all. It's 9.58 on my watch and 9.58 on the clock. I'm ready to go. Rail network employees across the board operate with military discipline. This army of sanitary workers cleans the trains in less than 10 minutes and rail agents present throughout the stations ensure the fluid circulation of traffic. All are here to make commuters' lives as easy as possible. As you can see on the departure and arrival board, departure tracks never change, so passengers can anticipate the tracks. Train carriage numbers are written on the ground, and the conductors are trained to stop at exactly the right spot. If the train goes even a few centimeters past the designated stop, the conductor will move back. But Japanese commuters pay a hefty price for world-class efficiency. A train from Tokyo to Osaka, a distance of 500 kilometers, costs 110 euros. A dance group in Taiwan specializes in hip-hop. Its members wear shiny shoes, headbands, and bright purple basketball jerseys with big afros on the front. Now, none of that may sound particularly remarkable, but what if I told you their average age was more than 70 and its oldest member was 91? Simon Harding reports. Hitting their groove in front of a loving crowd. These are the members of Six Carat a revolutionary hip-hop dance group in Taiwan with an average age of 70 years old. Despite most members suffering from knee problems or osteoporosis, they still enjoy rocking away to the tunes of their grandchildren. Dancing hip-hop makes a difference to my physical strength. Also, I don't feel like a 70-year-old person because of dancing this kind of style. <laughs> the dancing group has its roots in a government project promoting senior education that was established nine years ago in Taiwan, 
The programme also allows its members to connect with young people through music and therefore reintegrate into society. Six Carat has been an instant success, attracting many volunteers, including the 91-year-old Wang Chen Bi Jin, the oldest member of the group. Dancing with the group makes me really happy. People who dance are less likely to become forgetful and dull. Going outside, laughing and joking with others, talking and laughing with other people is better. Moving your body is good. Taiwan was recently classified as an aged society, meaning a seventh of the country's population is above 65. Helping seniors integrate into society is one of the authorities' main goal. Six Carat has clearly done the trick. And finally, take a look at this regional festival in Thailand aimed at welcoming the monsoon season. This in the northeast of the country. At the annual event, people launch homemade rockets aimed at prodding gods into unleashing rain ahead of the rice farming season. Teams tour the rural region and compete to see who can send the rockets highest. The event also includes religious processions, mud wrestling, and booze-fueled dancing to Thai country music. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching, and please stay tuned to France 24. Declared an autonomous state of Somalia in 1998, Puttland sits at the crossroads of major maritime routes. Pirates often raided ships carrying valuable cargo and held their crews for ransom. The European Union's armed forces have nearly put an end to these attacks. But the threat remains, as various jihadi factions ratchet up the violence, endangering Puttland's fragile stability. Join me for Puntland Revisited all this week on France 24 and France24.com.